No, we are waiting. Just wait, just wait. Okay. Just, just checking last time. So there's no such thing as unofficially a little bit of a chat, yeah. Okay. Okay. Would you like to Yes. A very warm welcome to Finland International School. On behalf of the um, board, my name is uh, Anna Hart. I'm the principal of Finland International School Racecourse. Here next to me, we've got the owner trustee, Mr. Shashank Goika, and uh, COO and founding principal, Mr. Nikke Keskinen. And just uh, joining us right nice now, uh, uh, our advisor, Fatima Agaka. Welcome. Hi. Yeah. Basically, I'm the trustee and the owner of Finland International School. So this is the third school we are starting and then more schools to come in the future. And yes, we are launching, we are opening doors for admissions now. And welcome to all of you. Sure. <coughs> so excited about uh, um, what Shashank has actually uh, spoken about. It's passion. It's um, bringing in a new age of learning. Very excited about it, uh, considering that you know the last 20 years have been uh, invested in this industry. Um, it's kind of like uh, bringing in an all-rounder, which we need right now. Um, and I think um, that's the passion um, that we are supporting uh, as far as Shashank's vision is concerned, bringing in all elements in. Sir, you introduce yourself and what you Yes. So my name is Nick Kegeskinen. I'm CEO of Mr. Shashank's company, the background company for the school, and also the founding principal of Finland International School Race Course. This is the fourth country, personally for me, outside Finland that I am, I am working for establishing school or, or heading it. And uh, if you ask me one thing, what makes us unique, let's say globally, is that we are bringing Finnish education, Finnish pre-primary and primary education curriculum merging with International Baccalaureate IB middle use program, diploma program and careers program also in the future. So we are really, really establishing something new and unique in Mumbai. Yeah, so I just wanted to add what um, uh, Fatima said is, so the entire passion is mine and everything but it is not achievable without Fatima here, so, and, and she is required there, then only the entire holistic and the overall development of the school, what we are wanting to achieve, will be achieved. And what is the future and what is the package? So future is, Finland. yeah, so basically future of Finland education is very simple, is that uh, this is the third school we are doing, we are looking at more and more schools, but not at, at the cost of quality. So, mm -hmm. like a lot of people do franchising, a lot of people do franchising, we are looking at management alliances, mm -hmm. where the entire quality of the uh, education the school is imparting is in the control, in, in our control, and not the franchiser. Because when it is a franchise, people start cutting corners and looking to get profits out of it. This is mainly to, uh, you know, we are doing this for quality education, so that the next generation or wh whoever is studying in our school, will be happy of what they have learned and take things ahead and obviously it will help the country as well. But not at the cost of quality. Uh, what is the philosophy of Akhaya? So, philosophy I would say, I, th I think Anna would better explain <laughs> it. Yes. yes. Um, we want to make sure that the children are the number one in our schools. So, uh, Finnish approach is uh, renowned for the child-centered or learner-centered approach where well-being of each individual child is at the center. We focus on personalized learning paths so each child can get the support they require to make the most um, and thrive in the 21st century. Skill development 
and um, understanding of, of concepts are key um, in our education. I also want to add to what Nikke was saying that uh, yes, uh, the alignment of uh, the international baccalaureate uh, framework with the Finnish approach is very important, but equally the national education policy 2020 is uh, um, at the uh, like a bottom of what we are doing here. So we are very happy to kind of re uh, revolutionize the landscape of educational uh, setting here. In Mumbai, setting example, new benchmark to um, what education is about. And actually also globally, we, um, we want to be the one setting example. How does Irish teaching method differ from traditional school? Interesting. Um, Essentially, uh, I think what Anna actually spoke about was about um, learning by doing, which is very different from our traditional uh, approach, which is standardized curriculum. You know, we have frameworks for it. Um, you, I mean, whether it's home economics, whether it's textiles, whether it's arts and craft, whether it's uh, woodworks, you're getting an opportunity to actually um, build on your skills, which is very different from uh, traditional schools, uh, quite frankly. Up, uh, which school is it? I'm from the SSE. SSE, na? So maybe the ICSE. We didn't have those opportunities. This is actually allowing children to learn by doing, which is very different from our SUPW <laughs> kind of thing. And if I can add to that, the academic subjects are very important, but equally experiential learning. Again, we really want to emphasize each child um, has their inner passion. We want to bring yeah. that up with home economics. We've got um, woodcraft, we've got textile craft, robotics, all built in our curriculum. So it's all hands-on, but it's also a very rigorous um, at the same time. So imagine your child um, actually picking up a subject and learning because he wants to learn that. Uh, and that's Shashank's vision, right? That if he wants to, to figure out how to build a, a tower, someone should support him. And that is actually essentially what Finnish education is. And multidisciplinary approach to learning is then one answer to the question compared to, let's say, traditional teaching and maybe learning, and then how we want to do it. So multidisciplinary learning is blending all the subjects. So subjects kind of don't come first, but the learning go through subjects. So like practical knowledge. Yeah, practical knowledge. Practical knowledge. Oh, acha, uh, what is the temperature today in Mumbai? 35. 35, huh? Highest temperature? 34, 35. 35? Highest ever? Highest ever? Uh, 57. Uh, yeah. uh, not in Mumbai. Uh, in Mumbai, it would be 38, 39 maximum. I mean, no, I think recently newspaper, yes. I had the highest, uh, highest temperature was 39 point something in 39. the past 10 years. Yes. Yeah, South exactly. So we want the children to know why. Why? Mm. And what can we do? I mean, we know why now. What can we do? And that's really the team working behind. So, if you see this, this, this entire apart, this building, we did not construct an entire new building, mm -hmm. right? We took a 70-year-old building and refurbished it, right? We are looking, taking care of the environment right from the start. If you will see, none of the interiors has fall ceilings because to get that fall ceiling in the amount of carbon footprint it will have, that is going to make a difference. And environmental yes. stewardship is one of our uh, values as ah, well. Big and one. We yeah. want to make sure that it shows in what we are doing, yeah. and also we're expecting the uh, children to be um, yeah. setting the example elsewhere. Yeah. So it's about um, also building a um, concept which is uh, acknowledging the ever-changing uh, world. We've got global um, citizens growing up um, here with us. We want to make sure that they're culturally sensitive, but also aware of the uh, impact of their own actions. And when I recruit teachers, I finalize the set of discussion with the question, who is ultimately responsible for learning? Is it teacher, parent, or student? 
most of the teachers are answering, it's me, the teacher, I, I, I'm responsible for learning. But I don't think that's the right question. It should be the student, ultimately, ultimately. So we need to teach them, make them learn the skills that they, <laughs> they, they need in the future. And quite frankly, I've uh, been in this industry for 20 years. I think, uh, thanks to Shashank, uh, we have the Finnish play, finally, which talks about all-rounder, which talks about life skills, which talks about learning um, in a way that will help you, um, you know, to do whatever you want to do. And you don't have to go to a Columbia or a Harvard uh, or an Oxford. But I think what uh, the Finnish education is providing us with is an opportunity to recognize who we really are and what we really want to be. I think maybe, again, I, I will add to uh, what Mika mentioned, that he's worked in many countries um, before. And I think I've learned about the Finnish approach when I've been abroad. So I've also um, worked in the UK and in Qatar in United Arab Emirates, in, in addition to Finland and now India as well. And, and something that I really want the uh, children to learn is to think for themselves, not just accept something that's being told, mm -hmm. as this is, is what it is. Yeah. So we want to make sure that uh, uh, we also um, encouraging them to be thinkers. Uh, and that aligns very beautifully with the uh, international baccalaureate. Mm -hmm. Um, What's um, support uh, services? We have appointed a um, counsellor as well as a uh, special education needs teacher. Um, additionally, we ensure that we've got small groups where the children are working in and also um, co-teaching, so there will be uh, more than one teacher in the room with the students so that we can truly um, support each individual with their um, personalized learning uh, plans. Also what happens is when we plan the lesson plans, we have a differentiation. So we recognize the child's talent, uh, we recognize the child's ability, and therefore we customize. So it's kind of very, very personalized. And if there would be any kind of learning uh, support need or or maybe psychosocial need also uh, regarding your growth. We don't want to send the child to someone. Mm -hmm. So that's why individual class teacher, subject teacher and teacher teams, yeah. their own skills also to recognize those support needs early and act and work preventively. It's very important. We don't want to like send a child, go to counselor, mm. go to psychologist, we want to work them. They come to the children. They come to the classroom. And also the teachers get the support. So uh, yeah. the teachers are working closely together in order to and develop further. And um, that, that is one of the big things you need to be able to uh, support the teachers in their work as well. Not, not just in the beginning of each term, but weekly and daily in impact. So, you know, one of the other things is when we talk about all-rounders, Shashank, Talk about the association that we have with uh, NSCI. So, so actually the thing is that when we're talking about holistic uh, development of the mm -hmm. child, right? So a lot of, lo uh, in general, in the schools which we have in, uh, in India and everything, it's, it's basically extracurricular activities, mm -hmm. right? In this school, there is nothing called extracurricular activities. It's part of the curriculum. So now all the sports that are there, it is part of your uh, part of your curriculum, part of your stu study and learning environment. So for that, you require a sports complex. So instead of making an entire sports complex, we have a tie-up with NSCI where all the children will be using NSCI facilities. They will be going from school to NSCI and learn the sports and the different uh, activities which we have planned for them. And this is not at any extra fees or anything, it is included in the fees. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to go anywhere else. It's basically we've given everything in one location. And sometimes parents ask so that, cool. uh, when, when are they having fun? Because the school day <laughs> is, seem, is seen like uh, boring. And then there are extracurricular activities yeah. after the school day. That doesn't make much sense from the students and child's perspective. So the school day is holistic, like Shashank said.
it has to have the joy and the happiness and, and the willingness to learn from morning till the afternoon. So there's swimming, there's, you know... Um, badminton, there's badminton, football, yeah. there is tennis and cricket, obviously. Which is, which, which is there and, and swimming and, <laughs> and swimming and swimming is actually compulsory so if you see there is a, so when once you see the campus as well so we have a small tank where the toddlers learn swimming it is a compulsory lesson for the toddlers because it is a life saving skill right yeah absolutely if there is floods in bombay you need to know how to swim some some point or the other and i think all of us faced it during the 20 mm -hmm. 26 11 yeah, yeah. The flood time, right? So these are all necessity life skills which they or the children need to learn. And when our students will visit Finland, to have a, have a you know field trip in Finland. Yes, there are only 5.6 million people in our country, but we have 200,000 lakes. Mm. <laughs> you need to but be no able to cricket. swim. No, no, no cricket. Cricket. We have finished yes, baseball. So I'm I'm uh, teaching uh, Shashank cricket. By the way. <laughs> He's not a fan. <laughs> What's the you're starting this first year? Uh, up to grade seven. Yeah. Uh, yeah, of course, uh, we will introduce, and we are, uh, grade 11 and 12 will be operational from uh, Next year. Next year. Uh, August, August uh, 25. Yeah, 25. Yeah. So every year the seven will become eight and nine. But we are also opening grade 11 directly in uh, next year August. Also because because of the program, we want to make sure that children have enough opportunity to learn. <laughs> so I have two questions. One is for the board members and one for Shashank sir. Yes. So the first one is personal and heartfelt. Yes. So as uh, you know, representatives of uh, the happiest country in the world for the seventh time, how do you ensure that the you know, Opportunity. And, uh, and compare yourself. I think Shashank can answer. So, so I, I, I will, I will answer that. <laughs> so, yes, sorry, sorry. So, so how, how does your curriculum and your education philosophy, you know, transcend this, this mindset and make sure that you know that there are cases where students have gone into depression for 0.1 percent. So, how does you know this school uh, will, will kind of elevate this culture? So, so I'll, I'll start with the happiness question first. Mm -hmm. Though I'm not a Finn, but still I will. You are it. very much Finn. You yes. are. He is very. So, much. so the taglines for the Finland Finland International School is very simple. It's called Happy Learners, Brighter Futures. So, if the child is not happy, he will not learn, right? And then the future will not be bright, right? That's the reason we have a tagline: Happy Learners and Brighter Futures. Uh, how we ensure that is very simple. In uh, in lot of words, everybody explains. So. Every child is looked upon or taken care of individually, focusing on what they are good at and what they are not good at. Mm. So we focus on what they are good at and make them happy, but at the hind side of the child, we are also working on their weaknesses. So what the major difference between the, from the schools where we have come from and what we are bringing right now, we have been talking about content learning, that means memory, right? We yeah. just we, we just talking about content. Here, why Finland is the happiest country is because from the education system itself, they are focusing on concepts, right? When you focus on concepts, you're, you're, you, you better understand the subject and you actually learn, right? Not memorize it. That makes a very, very, very big difference. And then the kind of child support we are giving, the kind of attention we are giving to the child, any kind of like, for example, bullying is also a very big uh, is a big problem in a lot of schools nowadays, right? Now what happens is when you talk about bullying, we make the child understand that, you know, bullying is, <coughs> we don't call the parent and say that your child is bullying the other person. Here the teachers sit with the children and explain them that this is the problem. Because calling up the child, parents is not going to solve the problem, right? It is making the child understand that bullying is something which is not good for you and for the other children as well. Till the child doesn't understand the concept, there is no there's no point of it, right? What will happen is the parent will, uh, the child will go home, the parent will shout at the child, and that's it. 
it just gets worse by that. So there are a lot of things that we've taken into perspective in terms of child support is concerned. And it is not something which we are talking about special needs. I personally feel recently somebody asked me a question. Does my child have to have autism to feel special? I think all children are special, right? So that is everybody we have to give them child support. And as Anna mentioned, even our teachers also get it. Today when the lockdown happened, a lot of teachers had a problem. So even the t uh, teachers in the school get a lot of support in terms of emotionally and whatever is going on at home or anything they require help, the school is there for that. And also uh, additionally, uh, you know, to talk about what we have been be uh, discussing internally as well, is that there are children who are gifted. You know, there are children who are off the spectrum. Um, you know, these are children, I mean, you can classify them as Einstein, 140 IQ. Uh, but we have a program even for them, which is very important because I think what uh, Shashank is mentioning is inclusion, inclusion for every child. Yeah, the high ability, uh, the children who need support, um, but making sure that the whole community is um, advancing uh, with the right support. And uh, very excited because uh, Anna and Nikkei have extreme ex experience um, in terms of how to deliver that. And the happiness, thank you for the question, because, because we, we are asked we are that, that question uh, <laughs> occasionally. Yeah, seventh time in a row being the happiest country in the world and we are like blushing and like, oh really, we, we, we don't smile all the time. Actually, we smile here more, you, more you, than regularly, you, you I think so. You smile a lot. Yeah, <laughs> so, but, but, and, and we are talking about the children all the time. Everything starts yes. with the child, all that. Yes. But then it's also, it's also about the teachers. Yeah. So the, the expectation for teachers working in our school is that we want children to fall in love with them pedagogically, the way that, hey, I yeah. want to come to school tomorrow again. And teachers make that thing happen. And if that is not there, then, then we are something else that we don't want to. So I had actually a friend of mine uh, who had, uh, who's moved from Singapore. Um, her daughter, uh, you know, is uh, applying to us. And she said she fell in love with the teacher because it was so easy to connect. It was so, it was so um, seamless in terms of a transition, you know, where she shared her fears and it was received in a way that um, told her that that's okay, we can sort it out and you're brilliant. So this is what, uh, you know, if I could sum it up, the Finnish education. I will still uh, want to add that positive reinforcement or positively uh, like encouraging students to make the right choice is at the heart of what we do. Yeah. So um, every school year, any place, any uh, class here, the children will be the ones who create their own class agreement. They are the ones who come up with what the class rules are and then they are expected to be following those. Rather than a teacher or a school mm. giving them a list mm. of things to not do that and scolding them. Yes. This yeah. is where we also like we make sure that there's the agents, and the students um, have the agency to make the right choices. But then they're also reminded, hey, this is um, you come up with this um, uh, agreement, and, and that's that, your and that ownership. Your, yes. Yeah. And one more thing is the breaks and the balanced curriculum as well, because if you are sitting oh, yeah. all <laughs> through um, the day and the teacher changes and you're just taking up a book, that's not what education is anymore. So it is that you need the brain break and you need also um, some activities in order to um, remain happy. One small follow-up question. So how do you make exactly ensure that children come to school to actually learn and evolve and not to compete with each other? Mm. <laughs> that, that's actually because uh, it's, it's a difficult question. You can't mention it in a few sentences, yeah. but uh, answer it in a few sentences, but if you look around the campus, we have a master chef classroom right there, right? But, you know, in the, people don't realize it, but that kitchen there is also a chemistry lab as well, right? Hmm. So they are, lear they are learning by doing, so it's not that okay.
so when you make food it's not going to be a competition okay you know your food was tastier than mine both of them have made the same food right but the process of making that food is what they are learning not whether whose food is more tasty or not right that's and how yeah. that's how we ensure it in school and to be honest that's all we uh, what we're trying to do to make sure that they don't focus on the result they focus on the process and that's why uh, the finish pedagogy and connecting to finish education in finland actually in our country the the state legislation says that schools prior task is to support mm. parenthood and parents are bringing their own children that's in our law book so how do you how do we as a school want to place ourselves in that family context so kids need to learn that they can't split teacher is saying something mother is saying something else so that's that's our like one goal why we want families to be close to us and that like kind of a home school collaboration that has to be real not just a fancy word any any closing statement if you want to add something I think you anything you want to add in Hindi if you have that. Oh, Hindi. Oh, Hindi. <laughs> 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 Nikki, well, maybe. Uh, I, I have I, this, this is the best I, I can I do. I, I love this. Any words, few words into Hindi? Ah, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. We love what we do. Uh, Quite frankly, uh, we're very passionate about what we have in terms of uh, a team and uh, what we can bring to Mumbai. Um, and I'm just going to say that uh, it's thanks to Shashi. No, so I, I think it's a vision which started seven, eight years back. But I think now with the board here, we have been able to reach somewhere. It's not just me alone; it's the entire team. And truly, talking as as Fatima and Nikki said. the team here enjoys what they do for them it's not work anymore so yeah. it might be 2 am at night or it might be you know uh, early morning 5 am <laughs> if they are passionate about it they don't yeah. find they, they don't find it work so that's so basically i to answer your question we are happy that's why the children will exactly. be happy exactly because happiness yeah. attracts happiness yeah and and we uh, communicate at 2 o'clock in the morning <laughs> as well Yes. Deciding how y'all will receive us today. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Look, Santa. Thank you. पहले तुर को बोल चुका हूँ शिवाजी सेंटर में
Thank you. Thank you. International School Race Course. Today we embark on a journey that promises to revolutionize the educational landscape, setting a very new benchmark for schools in Mumbai, across India, and for that matter, across the world. In a world that's rapidly changing, the importance of nurturing global citizens cannot be overstated. Our children are growing up in a time where open-mindedness, adaptability and deep understanding of diverse cultures is a necessity. The challenges and opportunities um, that they will change uh, face demand a very much of a holistic, forward-thinking approach to education. At Finland International School, we uh, embrace the Finnish approach to education, renowned for its emphasis on the learner. This philosophy aligns beautifully with the National Education Policy 2020, as well as the International Baccalaureate Middle Years Programme, Career Programme and Diploma Programme frameworks. Today, they form a powerful synergy that prepares our students to thrive in the 21st century. Our commitment to ensuring that each student receives the attention and support they need is nothing but exceptional. Our state-of-the-art facilities, which you will see soon enough going from this, um, this area, they are designed to inspire creativity, collaboration and innovation, fostering an environment where students can explore their passions and develop critical skills. 
Ah, uh, okay. Uh, at this point, I would like to give you some flowers, and the flowers are coming. <laughs> Flowers are coming from somewhere in the meantime before the flowers come. Madam, ready? अरे मैडम हो मैडम अरे क्या कर रहे हो आप हटो ना फूल दे रही है वो गरीब खड़े हो क्या बात है यार Can I also welcome the board members our owner Mr. Shashank Goenka please come and join us वो पैर आता है पैर आता है Fatima अगर था advisor please come and join us And Mr. Nick Kekeskinen, our founding principal and CEO, please come and join us. Are you guys back? Sagarika and Zahir Khan, please come and join us. Thank you. 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 Mobile. 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 Now we'd like to unveil a video which hopefully shows you something that we really are about. myself either before um, tonight. Um, it's something it tells what our school is um, about. It's our school uniform, not one uniform, but uniform which the child can choose from. So imagine coming to a school where you have to be wearing blue or you have to be wearing the one colour that the choose, um, school has chosen. So we have... No white cream either. So we will still have houses, but those houses are going to be shown in the PE uniform. And surprises don't come like that because they actually are different uniforms that I had seen before. So we have got our two um, PE uniforms and two school uniforms, but they are all together four. So, some more surprises for the next launch event. Next, we have our school flag. Please, board, would you um, join our chief guest to unfold the flag? And for that, I would also ask our teachers to come and perform the school song, which they have created together. Thank you. 
Okay. Yeah, of course. Yes, we can. Yes, of course. turnout and we're welcoming a brand new school, the Finland International School here at the race course in Mumbai, which is amazing. That song was amazing. I wish it was a little windier so we could see the flag, but I love the uniforms and all the spirit that we can witness here today. And I wish the school, the faculty and the children all the very best. I was very fortunate to be a part of the uh, inauguration, the launch of the Finland International School in Pune in 2021. So I'm so happy to see that it is expanding and growing as it deserves to. And I'm very excited for Mumbaikas and the children here especially that they can experience this lovely new way of learning. Uh, I'm sure that some of you are familiar with my family and uh, the fact that it's a very creative family. Uh, especially my parents, my mother was very much into films and drama, my father of course into sports. And they didn't have very academic um, they didn't go to university actually and I don't think that their schools could really contain their skills and their talents. Uh, I think perhaps if they were young today they would have availed of the opportunities that educational institutions such as the Finland Inter International School offers uh, and they didn't have that opportunity then. Uh, I'm so excited for the students that the world has changed and now occupations aren't so narrow Educational systems aren't so narrow and it's not just about getting high grades, it's not about learning by rote and it's not about any kind of standardization. 
and that's what the ethos of the Finland International School is, that each child is unique and they learn according to their own um, approaches, their own standards, their own levels, their own pace. Uh, and they have the faculty that is equipped to do that, to recognize each child's unique talents and to bring that to the fore. And that truly is what a good education is supposed to do. So I don't want to take up too much of your time because it's warm uh, and uh, there's a lot more fun things planned. So thank you very much for making me a part of today's celebration. And I do wish the school and the faculty and the students a lot of success. Thank you.